GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. This is the Listen In Podcast with your hosts, John Cimino and Brandon Goel, here on the Gear Radio Network. And hello everybody, welcome to this edition of the Listen In Podcast here on the Gear Radio Network. How's it going? I am John Cimino at IMJC Money on Twitter and joined here this th- this week. He's over here on this right here. screen. Mr. Brandon Goral. Brandon, say hello. Hey. Why does my mic have to be so far away? I don't know, but it does definitely does sound like your mic is a little farther away. Now you're you're going to raise the desk. We're rolling up here. Raising the desk. We're starting to see. Oh, oh okay. lower the camera. There we go. Hold on. Oh, oh. Make adjustments. Technology here. Oh. Uh, 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 Jesus, Brandon. All right. Well, while you do that, I'm going to go to speaker view here and just let everybody see me while I give the rundown here. Uh, hey, there on we today's go. show, Brandon and I are going to really just be ourselves. And uh, also to uh, Mr. Packers fan over here, Mr. Goral, uh, posed a interesting debate, I should say, or, or a debate topic. And yeah. I'm... I'm curious as to what the listeners would think about this this one here it is sports related well, uh, but we uh, will uh talk about that as we get there brandon my man uh now that you've got your camera situated there and i can bring us back into full screen view uh, yeah. how in the hell are you this week this is oh. episode 15 of the year yeah it's it's like it's crazy I mean, we're man. almost caught up to the nfl season almost caught up to the end well we got we still have two weeks uh, mercifully we we <laughs> still have two weeks left of of, of 2020, of 2020. So. Um, but you know, every year we do this thing where we're like, oh man, this is the worst year. Like next year has got to be better. And then we get like hit with something else each year. Like I think since 2016, it's been like celebrities dying and then like musicians. And then we're like, oh, next year has got to be better. And then it's just, sorry, fuck not. And then we get to 2020 and we're like, this is going to be the best year ever. We're out of that, the teens and we're in the twenties and look what happens. We're almost all dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things. I, I don't know. 2020. What a fucking year. I mean, it's, it's it, my it, vision. It's, it's crazy. It, it's crazy to think that, uh, in what, uh, what seemed like a year that would never end, uh, it's ending in two weeks. And, there's just so much that has uh, that has gone on, and I think it's all magnified more this year, maybe, because we've been forced to be at home to watch it all. You know what I mean? We can't really go anywhere without having to follow a specific yeah. order here or a specific thing there, or we have to meet a specific number. They have to meet a specific number of people here, and then it, it's limited, and then you got to wait. Like, I mean, remember earlier in the summer, I had to wait in line to get in the freaking Home Depot to go buy nails. Like, yeah, it's, 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 we, we say to your point, we say this is, you know, the worst year and next year's got to be better. Next year's yeah, got to be yeah, better. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, my biggest response to that, to anybody that, that listens or watches us while we are doing this uh, is, is it's very subjective. Regardless of what's happening on the outside, you really can make that year your own. You know, yeah. personally for me, and you know this damn well because uh, you've been there the entire ride. Uh, mm-hmm. But for me personally, while 2020 definitely had its downs for me individually, yeah, it, it wasn't a bad year. No, so, it isn't for me I, either. I, I mean, can't, I can't complain yeah. like some other people do. It's like first world problems, like. Uh, you know, like I can't go to concerts. Like this is the first time since I was probably 16. No, actually 15 was probably the last year that I didn't No, Maybe not even that. I, I went to a few concerts in 15 too. Like, well, since I was like maybe 14 years old was probably the last time I went like an entire year without going to some concerts. And so it's, that's my, like my biggest draw and like, you know, the, Kids can't can't take them to ball games and shit like that and hockey. It was my first year in season tickets for hockey, and you know I, I lose half the season. And uh, but those are first world problems. But I, I mean, a lot of good stuff happened too. Absolutely. I, mean, I got a home gym now, man. My my new gym Absolutely. is dope. Absolutely, I cage, do too. <sighs> that cage is dope. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I've used it a few times this week. I have to check that. I have to check that bad boy out. But yeah, um, definitely. 
Yeah, but I mean, to your point with the ball games, like, you know, I guess I, guess I can spoil it a bit, but there were talks for a third pro wrestling night um, oh. this year at Frontier Field. And the rumored guests were going to be either Kevin Nash or Bret Hart. And we were trying to get a ring for post game. Uh, so we're probably going to try and target to do it on like a weekend or something. And, and for a post game and have a wrestling show there where I would be actually wrestling at frontier field, which to me oh. would have absolutely like no matter what age, I think it would have brought <laughs> would the bag light have made an appearance. It would have brought, it would have brought me out of retirement regardless <laughs> of what age, uh, yeah. because that would be that to me would be WrestleMania. For me, it would be my WrestleMania yeah. moment. Yeah, wrestling, I mean that's a big deal, hometown. Right, wrestling in the in, in, at, at the hometown stadium in front of um, yeah. you know however many stay afterward for that, but wrestling there. Well, I'd have stayed. I'd have been jeering you. <laughs> well, I think I had think a that list of heckles made up. Uh, I think that would have been the point. I would have probably had to have uh, lost to Spikes again, but this time in a ring instead of on the first baseline. He's a bum. Yeah, a lightweight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I was it was two on one that day. Whatever, I don't care. But uh, all right. Uh, so, Brandon, uh, I, I know you said you're uh, you're a little on the uh, tired side off air. Yeah. So we yeah. Uh, we will <coughs> let's, let's do this. Well, before we go into the debate, you and I will pause here. <coughs> we'll insert a quick commercial for the podcast listeners, and when we come back, the great debate. That Brandon brought it up, and I did not mention what it was because I wanted you to wait until we start. And that's what we're going to do when we come back from the commercial break right after this. Welcome, everyone. This is Sleazy. This is the Fat Man. And the world-famous R-rated podcast is now on the Gear Network. The Wrestling Show with Sleazy and the Fat Man is classless and raunchy commentary on the wrestling business today. Our multiple hosts, including Sleazy the Fat Man, Chip Willett, and NEW owner Travis Cannon, give a differing take on news, rumors, reviews, and previews of the entirety of the worldwide pro wrestling market. We do what we want, we say what we want, and we don't give a at all. That's just the way we go. Check us out on the Gear Network. Here, oh, here. Brandon, your pal, over there. All I hope right. you guys bought stuff. I hope you bought stuff. I hope you, you know, whatever. Just listen. Yeah, Don't I hope you listen the to Amazon. the commercials. Don't I use the li- Amazon link. In hey, listen, and in the what's that? You missed the Amazon link? No, it's a don't use the Amazon link. Oh, I took that shit off the site anyways. <laughs> Screw you, Bezos. Well, if you've got just, bookmarks, I had it bookmarked for the longest time. And I had, I had. Still. Not only did I have it bookmarked, but I bookmarked it on several of my friends' PCs at work. Yeah, <laughs> I have it. They would leave PC it unlocked. PC. That would be what I would do. Is I would go. I would just simply. I would go to their bra- their bra- browser. I wouldn't fuck with and send stupid emails or anything like that. I just send their bra. I would just. But I type in the Gear Networks Amazon old Amazon thing, and then I would save it over their Amazon favorite. <laughs> I would do that. Maybe Bezos didn't like that. I don't know. Whatever. Screw him. Uh, all right, Brandon. So the great debate that uh, you and I were talking about a little earlier on that I thought was great to talk about here on the podcast, all things considering our uh, ground, uh, our bare bones, a uh, uh, skeleton of the podcast is sports related, but also to the direct ties to some of the other sports podcasts that are on this network. Uh, trust the podcast with uh, BLTD and Ryan uh, and I, uh, this is a, a special interest to that one uh, because Stefan Diggs is one of the subjects and uh, your boy Devonte Adams is the other subject. Yeah. So I, I am going to uh, give it, I'm going to pass the baton to you and I want you to tell to the listeners exactly what you told me <clears throat> and what brought this subject to light for us in the first place. Uh, I just, you know, I was killing some time in between a deploy at work and I was, surfing the nets and i went to espn and they had their cover story which was it was it's no uh it's no miracle uh stefan diggs is the best receiver in the nfl i was like excuse me uh i don't think so he's a really good receiver i give him that um but you know he's not you know he's not putting up the numbers that Devontae every year Devontae adams gets overlooked like you know, one year it's Julio Jones, and then it's and then it's all about um, 
DeAndre Hopkins is he's the best receiver. And, you know, now there's been a lot of talk about DK Metcalf this year and how great he's playing. And, you know, and then you, you get this cover story that's like, well, Stefan Diggs is the best receiver in the league. I'm like, well, the numbers don't bear that out. I mean, yes, he has a lot of receptions, but then again, so does Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is the only guy on this like leaderboard um, that you look at that played 11 games and that 11th game, he didn't even play the full game. He's got hurt. Um, so you got Adams over here. He's leading the league in touchdowns. He's got 14. Um, he's averaging 104 yards per game. There's nobody averaging hundred other than Adams. Kelsey's the next closest with 96. And then it falls off to 90 for Metcalf and 89 for Diggs. Um, you know, the touchdowns Adams is tied with Tyreek Hill, but Tyreek Hill's played two more games than he has. Um, so he's got 14 touchdowns to, you know, Stefan Diggs is five. Um, you, you go at receptions. You look at receptions. Stefan Diggs has got a hundred receptions. Great. He's got a hundred receptions in, in 13 games. Devonte Adams is fourth on that list with 91 receptions in 11 games, the 10 and a half really, uh, you know, and out of tw- uh, what, 120 targets, he's got 90 catches. Diggs has got 100 catches out of 134 targets. You know, their average per play, Adams got 12.6. Diggs has got 11.7. So I'm not really understanding why, like, even if you want to go yards after the catch, if you take Elvin Kamara, who's, you know, catching everything out of the backfield, and then you got Travis Kelsey's in – Second place right now with 518. Third place right behind him with 11 games, two games less than Kelsey again, has 504 yard or 504 yards after the catch. The guy has third, he has 58 first downs. That's the, the what fourth most, fourth most in the league behind Kelsey, Hopkins, Allen. Uh, again, all three of those guys played all 13 games. He's played 10 and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, I don't want to hear this nonsense that like, oh, well, he's got Aaron Rodgers. Well, Travis Kelsey has Pat Mahomes. You know, uh, Keenan Allen has Herbert, who's just throwing the ball all over the place because they can't run the damn ball. Um, you know, Buffalo's got Josh Allen. Josh Allen's playing really well right now. Like, it's not a scrub is just chucking balls. You're not, it's not Carson Palmer making these numbers. It's not, you know, Gardner Minshew throwing these passes and this guy's making all these catches. You know, they're all good quarterbacks. I mean, everyone made a big deal about Michael Thomas, but he's got Drew Brees, you know? So, like, I, I just never understood why, like, every year it's somebody different that is supposedly the number one receiver in the league, but every year, time and time again. And if you want to look to how valuable and how good Devontae Adams is, look at that season when Rodgers went down. That season that they almost made the playoffs, he was out for like nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And we had some of the worst quarterback play in the league. Devontae Adams' numbers did not drop very much. Everyone else's did. Jordy Nelson's fell off the face of the earth. He was mm-hmm. barely getting a ball thrown to him. I remember that. Um, but Devonte Adams was still up towards the top of the league. As far, as, I, I just don't understand why this guy doesn't get his due. And so, I, it okay. doesn't make any sense to me. So here's here's what I, here's my take on that. Um, I overall, you are correct. Uh, Devonte Adams is. Uh, the better rece- receiver. Uh, Adams has been in the in the league one year longer than Stefan Diggs. Uh, but that said, here are their career totals. Diggs, uh, eighty out of, in eighty three games, um, he has four hundred sixty five receptions, five thousand seven hundred and ninety yards, thirty five touchdowns. You bring it up to Adams, who in ninety seven career games. I do not know if this includes playoffs, so please don't. Uh, no, it's a regular season. That. Uh, 522 receptions, 6,338 yards, and 58 touchdowns, which is a really good uh, number for touchdowns. And Diggs will get there too. Um, now, I, I think Not the big, case. <laughs> I think that the difference between um, Adams and Rogers, or not Rogers, Adams and Diggs, uh, like you, like you said, is Adams always had Aaron Rodgers. Diggs always didn't have Josh Allen. Oh, yeah, so, there, so, there's, so there's that piece. 
the other piece is what I was kind of starting to tell you through text um, earlier today, but I wanted to save the most of it for this podcast is that the Bills are the, are, are the Cinderella team. They're the team that's never, that's never, at least within the last 25 years, um, hasn't really been in it very much. Whereas when you compare that to Green Bay, they've kind of always been in it. You know yeah. what I mean? And, re- and with regularity since 2006. Yeah, no. I know there was 2006. They, I think they made the playoffs then. Then they came back in 07, and that's when Favre and them made the NFC title game yep. and lost. They almost made the Super Bowl. Uh, then 2008, Rodgers' first season as a starter. They went 8-8. Eight and eight. Second season as a starter, we're at the Super Bowl. And then it's been playoff and, and NFC championship game after, after NFC championship game after whatever. And despite all of the injuries to Aaron Rodgers and all of the, you know, the, the Green Bay's extreme inability to, you know, sub- build other people around him, um, they've been there. They've been consistently there. So Adams has not known much of a losing season or losing seasons or a losing culture. Whereas Diggs kind of did in Minnesota and huh, realized well, because they're, they're up on our tail. And I, I can't say that they've been in a, a losing, losing culture in Minnesota. I mean, they were the, the, uh, the team that had the big, you know, missed tackle against the saints, the saints, whiffed on Stefan Diggs and he got the game winning right. touchdown. Like but they've been in every, the playoffs. But for every one of those, there's been multiple playoff appearances, consistent playoff appearances for Devontae Adams. He's always there. Diggs is right. not. He's not always there. He's not there as nearly as much as Adams is. So that's the that's one key element. Um another key element is moving to Buffalo for Diggs. Now mind you, he got out of Minnesota because he could see that they were wanted to trade out of Minnesota because he wanted he could see that they were wanting to go run first more and he felt he could offer more. And moving over to Buffalo where you've got Josh Allen who has got a freaking cannon for an arm yeah. um, and has been working on his accuracy over the course of the past offseason into this season. You can tell I'm on Trust the Podcast, Brandon, because I've had to follow the Bills more than I've had to follow the Jets seemingly. So I know a lot, I know a lot about them. But um, yeah. they've had, the, you know, <clears throat> Diggs was the, you know, the, the Bills were on the cusp of something as it was. You know, two playoff appearances in the last three seasons, that's something. They're on the cusp of something. But I think the addition of Diggs to that Bills team was what kicked it in overdrive for them and got them to 10-3. and three. I, I think Stephon Diggs completely changed this Buffalo Bills dynamic. I, I hear all that, but that doesn't make him the best receiver in the it league. It doesn't make him the best receiver in the league. And that's However, what I'm saying. the reason why he's being covered like he is is because his contribution in my, this is my opinion. I'm I am no field analyst or anything like that, but this is this is my opinion outside looking in. Diggs's contribution to the Buffalo Bills this year, I think, supersedes Adams's contributions to the Green Bay Packers solely because Josh Allen is in year three, Aaron Rodgers is in year sixteen. Doesn't matter. It matters. I, it, well, you're not, I would say you're it not matters. At it, you're not looking at it objectively, though. Like, Stefan Diggs is like their number one receiver, but he's got five touchdowns. Okay. Adams is the number one receiver for Green Bay. He's got 14. The next guys up on that list are Alan Lazard. Nobody's ever fucking heard of him unless you listen to the Green Bay Packers. Marquez Veldez Scantling. Again, not a household name. Nobody really cares. And and Amequius St. Brown. That's who Rodgers is throwing to. He doesn't have he he made a tight end out of a guy who was a college quarter early college quarterback, then converted to wide receiver, and now is playing a tight end because of that's how low they are on receiving targets. Rodgers is making something out of those guys, but that doesn't take away from if we don't have Devontae Adams, the offense suffers significantly. Yes, the offense when he's probably out, suffers significantly. It suffers. Right. And and I think to the point about uh, um, Stefan Diggs and his touchdowns, you know, in, in Green Bay, you have Aaron Rodgers, who is Aaron yep. Rodgers. He's, when he retires, he's walking right to Canton. Right. Um, but you have Aaron Jones, and you have Devontae Running back. Adams. And, and Aaron Jones plays half the snaps. Right. He so plays, right there, that's why that's, that he takes two series off. But that's 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 why Devontae Adams has more touchdowns because Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a a 
Knox or a Brown or a Cole Beasley or a Devin Singletary. Like he doesn't have all of those pieces to throw to, which would take away if if Josh Allen. Well, did he not does because have- he has. 40 touchdowns this year and 14 and went to Adams. Right, so, uh, right. There's 26 he, other accounted for. He has 26 other touchdowns to different mm-hmm. receivers. Allen has 28 total. That's what I'm saying. Like half, like more than half of the production has come out of everybody else for touchdown passes than Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is leading that. Like, he's the leader in the clubhouse on that team. But to say that Josh Allen has all these other weapons to throw to in the red zone, like Aaron Rodgers is obviously doing that too. If you've got a guy who's thrown almost as many touchdowns to other receivers not named Adams, then Josh Allen is thrown completely. Like, again, I think that they're overstating, yes, Diggs had a big impact. Yes, Diggs is a really good receiver. But to say that he's the best receiver in the league, I think that's nonsensical. I still don't think he's even better than DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, that's 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 a very 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 good point. That's a very good point there. I mean, it, it, I, I think I I would argue Diggs is top three. You're, he is top you're, three, you're, but and, like and I'm not disagreeing have with you. And like do a whole like cover story and a shoot about how <laughs> Stephon Diggs is the best receiver. Well, in the league. yes, but that's ESPN. But he's they been do that around. The people that they want to remember when they were doing. But I, the, it's the been Facebook on Facebook memories reminded me of this just today. It was on Fox you how, the other night. You remember how they were bad, playing? Do you Sorry. remember how bad they used they were when they covered Johnny Manziel? Yeah, no, Johnny I get Manziel it. Manziel farted and it made and it made front page news. I get so, it. I mean, but this is just the new not, hotness for ESPN. Not ESPN's the only one saying this. Like I heard two different announce crews that were calling Bills games saying that Stephon Diggs was the best receiver in the game. I'm like, what are you talking about? Gets a good corner, he disappears. Mm-hmm. Adams okay. doesn't disappear. I, I don't get it. This he is a doesn't. very this is a very good debate. Honestly, this is a very good uh, uh, comparison. You brought you brought a strong one earlier in the podcasting season with Breeze versus uh, Rogers. Now 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 I mean, Adams look, versus Diggs. This is I, I think this is great. So I think what I'm gonna do is we'll we'll Let's pause this particular discussion now um, because I, I know there, there can be a follow-up because I'm absolutely going to pose the question to others and I want to, uh, I, I want to see how many non-Homer Bills fans will look at it objectively and agree or disagree with you on that. I happen to be, uh, I happen to agree with you. Uh, Adams, you know, well, that's while, what I'm saying. While, like, while Stephon we got upstate Diggs, New York here and they're going to all be on the big, while, the while big Stephon Diggs wagon. walked into one bills drive and quite literally transformed that team into what it is. Uh, yeah. That team is not that team without him. And I think you can agree with that, but in the same saying that Devonte Adams has done a lot more. Yeah. But I, I think a lot of that is because Green Bay has done a lot less around them. And if you, but if you take Diggs out of Buffalo, they mm-hmm. still could be a wild card team. If you take hey, Adams right team. now out of Green Bay, I don't know that that team makes the playoffs. Uh, that's tough to say. Um, I know that they're, they wouldn't go very far in the playoffs. I still think they would go to the playoffs because they still do have Aaron Rodgers. Um, because the guy has, you know, made other receivers who really weren't much uh, turn out to be pretty good receivers. Uh, perfect example, James Jones. James Jones leaves Green Bay after Rodgers kind of pumps him up. He signs a big deal with the Raiders, does jack shit, gets cut, and then comes back to Green Bay and starts catching touchdowns again. Um, it's it's hard to say that we would not be a playoff team. I think Buffalo has a better chance of going further with Diggs. Um, I think the same could be said for Green Bay is they're, they're going to go farther with Rodgers. Um, last point I'll make on this, that game I was talking about, it was against Detroit. Uh, Adams had three receptions for 36 yards, and then he went out and got hurt. Um, but ever since like he came back, he was on a pitch count against that game against Tampa that they lost 38-10. to 10. But ever since then, you know, 13 catches, seven catches, 10 catches, eight catches, seven catches, six catches, 10 catches, seven catches. Every game he scored a touchdown, except for that Tampa game um, and the one he got hurt. He had two in the first game. He had two against Houston. He had three against Minnesota, one against the 49ers, one against Jacksonville, one against Indy, 
one against Chicago, two against Philly, one against Detroit last week. When you look at Diggs, Diggs has games where he played against the Rams, had four catches for 49 yards. He got a touchdown that game. It was one of his five. He's got six catches for 46 yards against Kansas City, six catches for 48 yards against the Jets, six catches for 92 yards against New England. Um, And then he's picked it up over the last few weeks. Seattle, terrible, terrible pass defense. Arizona, also a terrible pass defense, two of his best games of the season. The Chargers, also not a very good defense. 49ers, not a good defense, 10 for 92. Pittsburgh was probably the best game he's had all around, and it was the best team he's probably played all around. Um, But still, one game doesn't elevate you to the best receiver in the league. I think everyone needs to pump their brakes. All right. Put some name. I, I, put some gonna, respect on the man's name, <laughs> Devonte <laughs> Adams. Let's let's. All right, let's do that. But I'm going to pose this question uh, when I when I when we release the podcast, um, and then certainly, obviously, for those of you listening uh, listening in on listening here or watching us, uh, certainly weigh in. If you're watching us on the video cast, comment below. Let us know what you think, and I will read them on the air, <laughs> and and then Brandon will roast you if he does not agree with you. I'm going to roast you anyways. You can roast him anyways. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, that's really, that's really all I had for this, uh, for this edition of listen in Brandon. Uh, what else oh. you got, man? Uh, you don't have any NBA hoops for me. Uh, I can go to a quick commercial and go grab one. Let's do that. We'll grab a, we'll grab a quick commercial. We'll come back Two NBA hoops cards, two NBA hoops. And then we'll, and then we'll take it home. Listen to podcast. <laughs> Get radio network. Stick around. What's up, Rock Soldiers? This is Robbie Vegas coming at you from the All Bets Are Off podcast. If you are into horror movies, the paranormal, professional wrestling, or music, this is the place for you. We're bringing you the latest and greatest interviews in all of the above music, horror, and, of course, professional wrestling. So tune in on the Gear Network. Check out All Bets Are Off. Rate us, like us, subscribe to us, leave us your comments, tell us what you think. And we'll catch you soon on the All Bets Are Off podcast, dropping every Sunday at We noon. are back once again, yes. ladies and germs. I couldn't leave without some hoops. Couldn't leave without some hoops. You're right. The gimmick. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> again, for those of you first-time listeners, uh, first-time viewers, the gimmick is I was gifted several years ago uh, unopened packs of NBA hoops cards from the 1990s. And there is a very specific card in this pack, uh, in this in this series that I am looking for, and it is the Mark Jackson card from when he played with the New York Knicks. Uh, and the reason why I want that card is because the Menendez brothers, you don't know who they are, Google them, um, were pictured in the audience behind Mark Jackson, and it made the card. So... Um, well, I got these packs, and we've been opening these damn packs, uh, you know, during especially during the pandemic here. Otherwise, I'd have Brandon open a pack if we were face to face. But, <laughs> uh, um, and and what we do is we we open them up, and I cue up funny music, and we listen to the, the music while, well, we don't hear it live, but you hear it and post at it, um, and we go through and look at old old cards and reminisce. So uh, here we go. Uh, Hold on, before you do that, I, th- I think uh, something happened to Derek Carr tonight. What happened to Derek Carr? He got sacked out of bounds on a third and goal. It looks like from the game cast. I'm not watching it. Um, and then they kicked a field goal, but then the next drive, Marcus Mariota was in for the whole drive. Huh? And he went three for three and threw a touchdown pass. He's four for four with 76 yards and a touchdown right now. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, let me search Twitter here. I was surprised because I'm like, why is Mariota still in there? He's in there right now still. It's in the second quarter. Derek Carr trending. Groin injury. Oof. Questionable to return. Oof. That hurts. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, I just popped up. Not good. Oh, Oh, you you just got the alert now too? Yeah. Leaves with a groin injury. Yeah. Ain't that a bitch. All right. Here we go, Brandon. Mariota time. ready, my man? I'm ready. Let's go. We're going to start off with your boy, Brian Shaw. Oh, yeah. I like Brian Shaw. He was a good coach, too. Yeah. Lakers, unfortunately. Yeah. Let's 
Good assistant. Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. Hell of a game. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. This this is this is a new one. I, I don't believe we uh, have seen this one before. Oh, uh, rookie card for Mr. David Robinson. Robinson. I have actually I have to find it. I have is actually the one the year before it where he's wearing his suit and he's got a Spurs hat on. He was holding up his one finger for nice draft pick. And it was came out of the Navy. Reggie Miller. Oh, dude was freaking. He was a killer. Yeah, cold blooded killer. He was. And uh, let's see. Not a bad analyst either. I like him on TV. The fu- Steph Curry's father. Ha, <laughs> Dell. Dell, baby. Dude, we got to talk about Steph Curry's hair, man. Okay. He's got this real tight braids right checklist, now. Checklist, another checklist. Ugh. Fucking useless card. What cards. a waste. Really was a fucking useless card. It was, man. No one was sitting there like, I got to check off my cards. I never, never You once. did. You got a wedge in school. Never, never once. Did. You're like, you check off the checklist. Like, that was probably like the ultimate, like, you're going back and forth. You're and like, Shut jokes. the fuck up, milk. You're doing your <laughs> stupid checklist. You're going back and forth. You're drilling on each other's mom. And we're like, yeah, well, I bet you check off the checklists and your baseball cards. And they're like, <gasps> everyone like freaks out. Like, oh man, he got you there. And the kid run home is crying. Oh, so start chanting soup, 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 soup. Checklists. Soup cuddles with them at home they don't <laughs> understand you like i do <laughs> mark acres oh my God. wrong mark no nope. of course nope. if if i end up coming across mark color jackson, too. you'll know i get it you'll know i i, I picked up mark jackson before mark i even show it to you because i'm gonna fucking have a celebration <laughs> be a stone cold celebration too yeah uh blair rasmussen oh man denver uh, nuggies Will Purdue. Oh. Remember him? Yeah. All that talent that Michael Jordan had around him. Yeah. Let's see. Look at this fucking look at this look at this uh look at this mug shot. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Boy, John Paxson. All right, Pax. Uh Buck Johnson. Clyde the Glide, his all star oh, card. Yeah. This is a, a double. Bird in the background. Yeah. I think I, I'm pretty sure that's a double. The legendary bird. And then we've got uh, Jack Haley, Mel Turpin, and Drazen Petrovic. Oh, Draz, man. Draz? Yeah, you remember Drazen Petrovic? No, I can't oh, say he I was do. good. He died. He died. He did? Car accident, yeah. Oh, geez. Let me look that up. That's no good. That's his rookie card. And this sweet He's Yugoslavian. Team. He played for the Jets. Or the Jets. Ugh. Nets. Look at the look at the look at the uh, uh, Blazers unis back then. Yeah, freaking dope he... unis. Usually, like the last card is some scrub, but uh, yeah. he was a star, man. Like he was doing really well, and then he was in. Uh, he he had a uh, was riding a car, got smashed head on with a truck hmm. in Germany, and he died. I remember getting that late night breaking news that he had passed away. He was a really good player. Jeez. And then I, he uh, just... I, I did not know, but Oof. yeah. Look at yeah, that. you have his rookie card. And I have his rookie card. That's yeah, when the... he went to the Nets, that's where he really started to shine. Let's see. Yeah, I'm bringing it up now. And it says, yeah, summer of 1993 after his best NBA season. And yeah, the Nets' first round elimination by the Cavaliers. Patrovic was tra- traveled to Berlin where the Croatian national team was playing a qualification tournament mm-hmm. for the 1993 Eurobasket. And then ultimately he had a traffic accident on Monday, June 7th, 1993 did not survive. Wow. Yeah. That's 22 awesome. points a game is last season. All right. Well, damn. Yeah. Shooting 45% from three. Well, uh, safe home. Draws him. I know it's a little overdue. I got your rookie card. And, it's a little uh, overdue. I didn't I, know who you were. <laughs> I hate, I hate to do this, but. We do have another pack, so yeah. Well, you know, you gotta you gotta move on. You gotta stop living in the past, kinda, right? Yeah, kind of gotta stop living. In the, okay, Al- Alexander Volkov's rookie card. Oh, uh, he's still alive, I'm sure. No, no relation to the late Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> uh, Larry Nance, Brandon, senior, oh, not junior. Yeah. Junior's oh, yeah. currently with, playing for the with cast. the admiral in the background. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, hosting right. up with the admiral. Uh, we've got Mark Bryant over here. Okay. Uh, eight Adrian. Dantley. Yeah. That was back when those Mav teams were really not good. <laughs> this card may 
This card may get blown up into a canvas. Minute bull? Huh? Minute bull? No. No. Uh, R- Reggie Theus. But look at this oh. fucking card. Whoa. That Imagine mustache. that hanging over the mantle. <laughs> Reggie I like Theus. it. That might be my new favorite card. Uh, here's a, here's my, Michael Cooper. Yeah, I remember Coop. Yeah, he looks like he's like 90 years old there. Uh, okay, Dave Hoppin. I have a feeling this is not a. This is one of those packs where you're like, "Oh man, Ma, can I go have 50 more cents? Go back to the store, get another pack." Definitely. Um, Winston Garland, <laughs> Johnny Newman. The only thing that would make this pack even worse is getting another checklist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad pack. Greg, Greg Kite. <laughs> Greg Kite. Ugh. Dude, look at this fucking mug back here. Look at this. Dude, <laughs> center Ricky, by day, porn star. Ricky, by Ricky night. Green. I'm sorry. I, I'm being inconsiderate to the podcast. Uh, the, the 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 audio listeners here. Uh, Ricky Green. He was a guard for the Indiana Pacers. Uh, I should go. Uh, I I should be a little more. Uh, hey, uh, listeners. David Robinson's all star card. That's a double. And go. then Johnny Moore of the Spurs. Mike Schuler, coach. Oh, I hated that they made those two. The coaching Those cards and manager cards, like manager cards in baseball. I don't know. I thought it was good to get the Larry Brown one. Here's Billy Thompson uh, of the Miami. Right. Um, see, like the Jack McKeon and <laughs> Jim Leland and Jim, Tony LaRusso. Jim I'm like, why do I want this bullshit? Yeah, More players, well, man. I don't know. I, I mean, for, I, I like the basketball. Was cheering for Roger Craig. <laughs> Not the football player, the coach of the Giants. So the we start. 86. We started off with a pretty strong pack and ended with a pretty shitty pack. Yeah, man. I think that, that, Drazen Petrovic like really killed the flow. That is uh, no that is not intended. very cash money of you NBA hoops cards. And uh, so next week when we do the <laughs> podcast, uh, come for strong. It's going to be the Christmas podcast. Damn it, NBA hoops cards. Give me my Christmas present, my Mark Jackson card. That's what I want. That's right, Brandon. That's any sweet. last words? Uh, nope. See you next week. <laughs> All right. We'll wrap a bow on the podcast as I go ahead and I hit the, uh, hit the microphone here and, uh, that's it. That's, that's the listening podcast for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, uh, it's going to be a great deal of uh, listener interaction. I think for the next week, we are really, really, I really, 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 really want to push this, this Allen versus, uh, not Allen, uh, the, the Diggs versus Adams uh, thing because I, I really want to follow up with this next week. I think it's a great topic and I think it's a very, very solid uh, solid debate and I'm very curious to hear what the listeners have to say about that and uh, what Brandon has to say in response to that. We will be back next week. We will talk that. We will talk more and we will give you Christmas wishes, I think. I don't know. I, I don't care about your Christmas honestly, but I'm kidding. I care. I love them. Uh, Brandon, we'll do it again next week. All right. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you as well. So long, everybody. Good night now. Flava Flav, give me a yeah, boy, for William Stansberry, Billy Thompson. Yeah, boy. Hang on. One more thing before you go. Remember, listen to our sponsors following this podcast, as that does help this podcast and this network out in a way that we appreciate very, very much. So if you could just ride it out 30 to 60 more seconds after this podcast is over, listen to those commercials, it would be doing us a very, very big solid. And again, we thank you. This has been a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. For more, log on to gearnetwork.com.